Sing about these hard times. Sing all about these hard old times. Sing about these hard times. When will the good times roll? I worked hard and I played my part. That's what I did right from the start. But these hard times are going to break my heart. When will the good times roll? Sing about these hard times. Sing all about these hard old times. Sing about these hard times. When will the good times roll? Life gets harder every year. Those with the least have the most to fear. And those with the most, well, they just don't care. When will the good times roll? Sing about these hard times. Sing all about these hard old times. Sing about these hard times. When will the good times roll? The big corporations got no home, and the men on the hill, they got hearts of stone. They worry my life like a dog with a bone. When will the good times roll? Sing about these hard times. Sing all about these hard old times. Sing about these hard times. When will the good times roll? Those who work most are the least provided. And when they go to war, they want us to fight it. When will the good times roll? Sing about these hard times. Sing all about these hard old times. Sing about these hard times. When will the good times roll? We're going to reap just what we sow. No time to waste till the dark winds blow. I'll do what I can till it's my time to go. When will the good times roll? Sing about these hard times. Sing all about these hard old times. Sing about these hard times. When will the good times roll? I just want to see the good times roll. I'm Alice Lindstrom. I'm um, a uh, retired member of the American Postal Workers Union, a, um, a civil representative of the San Francisco Labor Council, and a trustee of the American Postal Workers Union San Francisco. Renounced politics are as a result of her church and union experiences. Mm -hmm. How did you first meet her? Um, in 1986. Uh, she, I became aware of her. She became a shop steward. What would you say is her greatest asset as a union leader, her union care, activist? Her care of people. And, and also, she was one of the leaders in these many strikes that were going on before I knew her, back before the 1970s strike, where um, things would get particularly bad on the midnight shift at Rincon. And all these African-American women, many of whom were former Rosie the River Riveters in the shipyards, would get up and walk out. And uh, Vernell was one of those. Hmm. Is there anything you'd like to say to Vernell in congratulations for getting the Labor Woman of the Year Award? For it's karma. Vernell was one of the people who worked so hard so many years ago to have this, this uh, never thinking that she would be one. Of the of the of the labor people of the year. I'm really grateful for having her as as a colleague on the labor council. She she has she makes a big contribution to everybody she knows. Uh, my name is uh, Ishmael Burst Jr. But as a uh, spiritual leader, I'm Bishop Ishmael Burst Jr. I'm sure, you've played an important role as a minister in a in a predominantly black community, ministering to the spiritual needs and also the the social and economic justice needs of the people. One of the uh, realms of my work in that area is working with men. That's one of my uh, greatest works that I, I do here in San Francisco. Uh, working with men that from broken families, uh, incarcerated men, men that uh, 
need that, that spiritual help, you know, to help them to grow. Well, I know you're a preacher, not a teacher, but what kind of grades would you give Sister uh, Vernell on, on demonstrating Christian faith in social and economic justice work? Mm -hmm. I would give her an A. And the reason why I say that, because she real. She ain't faking mm -hmm. on us. Mm -hmm. You know, she ain't saying she this, but over here she that. She's who she is. Mm -hmm. And she's real with the people. And, you know, so many people love her because uh, she's a real person. She has a lot of knowledge, a lot of history that she can share with us and our younger generation. I have a lot of good things to say about Vernell. Is there any one thing that you would say is her greatest asset as a Christian and a mm -hmm. political activist? Yeah, well, I would say that in her political activities, she's, she's outspoken. She would speak up. She would speak up on an issue, whereas some leaders will sit back and they analyze it a little bit and check it out. But she, she would she speak up on it with fact. I'd like to salute her. I take my hat off to her for the great work that she's done in the African-American community and community. You know, I first met David Bacon in California in the Salinas Valley when I was um, organizing for the United Farm Workers in the strawberry campaign. And he showed up because he was photographing a strawberry campaign. I was assigned to to the Salinas office and um, the Salinas office in that I was in was one of the very first offices that or space that Cesar Chavez rented for organizing in the Salinas Valley. And it was an old, um, used to be an old bank built in the 1800s. It was the only place that would be rented to him. And the farm workers there told me about the struggle to operate the union out of that office. And the outside of the building still had bullet holes. The growers would go by and shoot at the building, knowing that it was the United Farm Workers office. I was surrounded in that office by history and including elder farm workers that would come and sit with me. They would just show up and sit in the office. Um, and wait for me to have a minute and would tell me stories about Caesar and organizing in the Salinas Valley. And into this office one day, um, David Bacon showed up with his camera. And David turned out to be one of those elders or one of those experienced people that had been with Caesar Chavez in the early days. Now, David Bacon is a treasure. I believe he is, um, will endure for generations because of his legacy that he's leaving behind now. It's important for us, we, we use it in our organizing work, but we also seek him out when we, we have questions about analysis. David Bacon very much deserves this um, recognition because he's at the center of this. He's at the core for many of us of that discussion. So David Bacon is laying a, a, a road that is being followed, and we're very grateful for that. He deserves this recognition. In the long history of uh, David Bacon's work, I think that most of us have come to uh, get to know not only the activist, the intellectual, but the human being. And I have traveled with him to many parts of the United States. I've been uh, collaborating with him for the last 25 years on his cross-border solidarity work. He's worked intensely with Maquiladora women, uh, photographing immigrants, but also photographing um, organizers, especially indigenous organizers who are both organizing in uh, their hometowns in Oaxaca, in Baja California Norte, in the fields where they go to work, and also in different parts of the United States. And David Bacon is committed because he sees the human being, he's committed to being there, documenting not only the activist, but the whole human being. And he's able to really uh, persuade people to let him into the privacy of their homes and photographing all aspects of these uh, workers, of these leaders. And I think over the long arc of his work, you can see that ultimately he's uh, documented the, the entire human experience of struggling, of trying to build a better world. He's there to capture this story, faithfully documenting what they think, what they do, their aspirations. And I think that's David's contribution to the movement. And people just love the way uh, he captures their images with such dignity. And to use that as our historical memory to continue in this movement.
So this is a very well-deserved recognition for Davis' consistency, for Davis' deep engagement with social movements, and for also capturing the humanity of workers. She became the 2014 third vice president of the women's ministry, dealing with youth programs and events at Third Baptist. She belongs to the San Francisco unit of Church Women United and was on the site committee that hosted the national 2014 Church Women United Conference. She has been an active member of the San Francisco Labor Council and their executive committee. The San Francisco Living Wage Coalition, the Coalition of Labor Union Women, the San Francisco branch of the NAACP, the Bay Area Concerned Citizens Committee, the San Francisco Human Rights Commission, the Black Human Rights Leadership Council, the San Francisco Sunnydale Task Force Committee, the SEIU Committee of the Migration of African American and Brown People out of San Francisco, the A. Philip Randolph Institute San Francisco Chapter, the American Postal Workin Workers Union Retirees Department, five of the National Arca Active and Retired Federal Employees Association, the California Alliance for Retired Americans, Communities United with Purpose, Executive Director of the Farms to Table Urban Project, founding member of the National Economic and Social Development Action Committee. It is my pleasure to introduce Vernal Hawkins, the Labor Woman of the Year Award. And I would like to invite bravo. Vernal bravo, to say bravo, a bravo. few words. Bravo. Bravo. It's beautiful and thank you. I'd like to say that uh, I know I did all the stuff. I got tired of hearing <laughs> what I have done. But I just want to say to the San Francisco Living Wage Coalition that they also share this because of what they do and are still doing. And we need to all get on board about what's happening in our country, about our workers. Thank you. It is my pleasure to introduce David Bacon, the Labor Man of the Year Award. Thank you. Uh, to the Living Wage Coalition and Carla and David and you, Kayla, especially. And congratulations for now. I mean, I was listening to it. And what a history of a dedicated and committed African-American worker and union member. I think you're really what our struggle for union and our struggle for justice is all about. So I'm, I'm so happy and honored to be here with you. Yeah. Um, actually, I want to thank the whole Living Wage Coalition family, Francisco Herrera and the Esteves family, and Nikki and Roger, my longtime friends, Frank, Jose, Gaspar, Peter, Brooke, my wife, Lillian, people who have passed on, like Rosa Peñade, thank you all. And special thanks to my fellow union members, Annabelle and Elizabeth, for the hard work of interpreting. You all do me a great honor, and I'll do my best um, to deserve it. We've traveled a long road together. When I was a board member and chair of the Northern California Coalition for Immigrant Rights and the Living Wage Coalition shared space in our office on 6th Street, this was even before the first living wage ordinance was passed here in San Francisco. And that was the first of many victories of the Living Wage Coalition in its long history of defending the rights and the survival of San Francisco's working families. Today, the Living Wage Coalition is fighting for a real immigration reform that can provide legal status to all the 11 million people in this country who need it. At the same time, it's opposing the bills like the Farm Workforce Modernization Act, which is one more proposal that takes advantage of our community's desperate need for legalization, but it exacts a price. It would force us to accept semi-slave guest worker programs criminal bars that exclude especially our young people from the legalization they need, and even more punishments of undocumented people for the crime of working. And unfortunately, we've heard all this before and fought against it. 20 years ago, our labor movement rejected these anti-worker ideas at the AFL-CIO convention in Los Angeles, 
while calling for complete legalization. Our unions here in the Bay Area led us into that fight at the convention and we won, but we still have to win what we need in Congress. And it's been a long fight, but we will keep fighting together until we win. Well, let me take this opportunity then to, to celebrate the worker. You know, we spend a lot of time battling for fair wages and for the rights of the working person, but we seldom stop to celebrate the worker and the, and to really call sacred all that we do to keep going the society in which we live. Without the worker, there would be nothing. And, and working is a, is a sacred act. Siempre en las batallas por la justicia, se nos olvida lo sagrado que es trabajar. El trabajador empeña, hace, tra, eh, hace obra sagrada. ¿Sí? Porque sin el trabajador, sin la trabajadora, no existiera nada. ¿Sí? Así es que les dedico estas palabras a mis hermanos, hermanas, trabajadores, trabajadoras. So I dedicate these words to my brothers and sisters, the, the workers, our workers. Trabajador, trabajadora. El que trabaja con sus manos es obrero. El que trabaja con sus manos y su cabeza es artesano. El que trabaja con sus manos y su cabeza y su corazón es artista. Así dijiste, hermano Francisco. ¿Eras artista entonces, hermano, construyendo San Damián y la capilla de Nuestra Señora de los Ángeles? No conozco hombre o mujer que trabaje solo con las manos, sin la cabeza, agobiada que sea, o sin el corazón amargo y doliente que esté. Son las circunstancias injustas que separan las manos de la cabeza y del corazón. Obreros, artesanos, artistas, somos todos trabajadores. Nos ganamos el pan y ponemos el pan y el vino en las mesas. Si pobreza hay, no es culpa nuestra. Es generosa la tierra cuando no cae en las manos de los avaros. Si bautizo hay de agua y de sangre, también la hay del sudor. The worker. He who works with his hands, her hands, is a laborer. He, she who works with his hands, her hands, and his head, her head, is a crass person. He, she who works with his, her hands, and his, her head, and his, her heart, is an artist. So you said, Brother Francis, were you then an artist, brother, rebuilding St. Damien and the chapel of Our Lady, Queen of the Angels? I do not know man or woman who works only with the hands without the head, way down it be, or without heart, though it be bitter and hurting. It is unjust circumstances that separate the hands from the head and the heart. Laborers, crass folk, artists, we are all workers. We earn our bread and put bread and wine on the tables. If poverty there be, 
it is no fault of ours. The earth is generous when it does not fall into the hands of the greedy. If there is baptism of water and blood, so also there is of sweat. And those words to you, my brothers, sisters, the workers, let us forever unite and achieve justice for us all. For without justice, there is no peace. Blessed be. Many arms reach out to me. Sister Georgia, my black brother Georgia, Mexicanas working in the fields of Georgia, Muskogee Creek, Georgia, all the way across Georgia, yeah. Stacy Abrams, Georgia. Senator Warnock, Georgia, souls to the polls, Georgia, win that vote, Georgia, lead the way, Georgia, together with Vernell and David, Georgia, lead the way, mm -hmm. stand, stand up with the Georgia, lead Many arms oh, oh, reach out to me. Many eyes smile tenderly. Still in peaceful dreams, I see leads back to you no peace no peace I find just an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind. Just an old sweet song keeps Georgia. On my mind. Mm -hmm. Bravo, it is my pleasure to introduce Tongo Eisen Martin. Much love and solidarity to everyone. Capitalist dropped 10 tons of barbed wire onto my Tuesday shift. We shot back at their chimpanzee pilot for the sport. Contractor has already smoked three cigars only one hour into my court appearance shift. Supervisor likes the smell, says it reminds him of when he ran the streets. And all I remember is we shot back. A gated puppet dances along. Bars and jigs says I'm the happy one of Legion. Meanwhile, kids commit childhood behind his wooden plaster joints. Wire dodgers under this silly puppet, a silly puppet dancing for white heaven. Like weapon is the jacket and precinct holds Friday hostage. We go through a fossil jaw to see a judge. 
the tunnel at the end of the light. I sleep until I'm woke by dry cereal and surrender. This holding cell only needs a giant panhandler's palm to shake us coin men around. I'm breaking my fingers for my sister's bill collectors. Garage casket open, I mean all third world parallels kill openly, breaking my lungs for my sister's rent on the sculptor of construction dust. I miss cigarettes by mid-morning. I miss Hennessy by sundown. I miss murder by inches. $5 bills cherish my days outside, always behind. Ain't no concentration in this courtroom. Just a bunch of B-plus students living out their nightmares. How do I plead with a straight face? Two blocks up is a reoccurring cliff. Along with slavery's paraphernalia, along with the ordinary panhandler, along with ethnic parade history, along with the ethnic parade, along with 13th graders. But, you know, let's talk about the fact that four dead children later, I still don't have a problem beating up in front of everybody. Let's talk about the fact that money is death. Down to my last five bucks is what I call this shoe. 10 o'clock political education is what I call this dream. I got the job is what I call this blues. Empire is too easy, baby. Chant at the walls or something if you feel like it. Best way for a target to move is shooting back. Running for a tree line made of freeways. Wisdom says against a war machine on Tuesday, you stand no chance, but may we be the last poor people to play it safe. Cow's mouth on the flag. A politician raises his hand and the crowd shows their teeth. An oligarch raises his hand, little kids are not safe outside. You all high, depressed, and comrades in function. 15 minutes of clothing in the city has survived another black rebellion. I mean, we just paying dues by trash fires, not just anybody can say. Don't you love how deadly things whisper in a moment and people kill like feathers fall while everybody's screaming inside? The writer knows that death is not a matter of dignity, rather humor. In a house that smells like road traces, nuclear percentages on torn stoves, I mean, here life never was. Just lazy matches and manic inhumanity, hands rushing away from life towards those. What are we doing here? Surviving for no reason in particular, because nobody gone far today. Nobody will go far tomorrow. Trust me, hell and heaven cannot count. Strange gardens where secondhand clothes play and concrete wishes to be human so that it could be a cannibal where they find you drenched and drains wish to be human so that they could be worthy armed for you to die in. Hey, greet them all, grandson. Prepare for the day when every child is calm and don't say we ghost didn't write you a poem. Don't say we didn't dig your life. Remember the shotgun by the coat rack that everybody in the house knows how to use? Remember the tightrope made of needles for walking in between driveways and man-made best friends? Go ahead, grandson. Tune this street again. Never mind this country kills musicians first. Broken neck, nice scar neck life. I mean, if these walls could write lyrics, they say, what's your angle, angel eyes? 30 to 50 rounds pass by on a street, a street with no daughters. This street has no sons, just young prisoners of war in a racist city that means to make capital. And we know so much. We know it all. We were stood against walls. Who's on the third cross around here? Cow's mouth salivating over the street. And that is the story of why we aim at teeth. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall shall not be moved like a tree that's planted by the wall.